In this video, we will delve into the fascinating and intricate anatomy of human teeth, examining their unique structure, the different types of teeth and their functions, and how they play a crucial role in our overall health and digestion. Beginning with a comprehensive introduction of dental anatomy, starting by identifying each tooth type and their corresponding numbers, providing a clear guide to their classification. Next, we'll delve into the intricacies of tooth surfaces, exploring both their external anatomy and internal structure in detail. Following this, we'll turn our attention to the periodontium, the supporting structure of the teeth, uncovering its critical role in dental health. We'll then examine the blood and nerve supply to the teeth. We'll discuss clinical correlations, linking our anatomical knowledge to practical dental scenarios. Finally, we'll wrap up with a comprehensive summary, ensuring you take away key insights into dental anatomy. Situated in the oral cavity, teeth are an integral part of the digestive system and play several crucial roles. They are essential for phonation, which is the production of speech sounds, and for the initial stage of digestion, where they break down food. Teeth also facilitate deglutition, or swallowing, and contribute significantly to facial aesthetics. Regarding dentition, there are two types, deciduous and permanent. Deciduous teeth, commonly known as baby or milk teeth, erupt in childhood and are later replaced by permanent teeth. A typical child has 20 deciduous teeth. The transition to permanent dentition usually begins around age 6. In adults, the permanent dentition comprises 32 teeth, which includes the molars and wisdom teeth. In the realm of dental anatomy, teeth are categorized based on their developmental stage and type. We can broadly classify them into two categories, deciduous dentition, also known as primary teeth, and permanent dentition. Starting with deciduous dentition, these are the first set of teeth that appear in early childhood. In this category, we find a total of 20 teeth. This includes four central incisors, which are the frontmost teeth, and four lateral incisors, located next to the central incisors. Additionally, there are four canines, often referred to as cuspids, known for their pointed shape and crucial for tearing food. Completing this set are for first molars and four second molars, essential for grinding food. Moving on to permanent dentition, these teeth gradually replace the deciduous teeth starting around the age of six. An adult typically has 32 permanent teeth. This set also consists of four central incisors and four lateral incisors, positioned similarly to their deciduous counterparts. The four canines retain their sharp, pointed shape for tearing. Unique to the permanent set are the four first premolars and four second premolars, also known as bicuspids, which assist in chewing and grinding food. Additionally, this category includes four first molars and four second molars, similar in function to their deciduous equivalents. Finally, there are the four third molars, commonly known as wisdom teeth, which usually emerge in late adolescence or early adulthood. In the international system of dental notation, teeth are identified using quadrant and tooth numbers. This system differs for permanent and deciduous dentition. For permanent dentition, the first digit in the tooth's notation indicates the quadrant number, which ranges from 1 to 4, 1 represents the maxillary right quadrant. 2 represents the maxillary left quadrant. 3 represents the mandibular left quadrant. 4 represents the mandibular right quadrant. In the case of deciduous dentition, the quadrants are numbered from 5 to 8, 5 corresponds to the maxillary right quadrant. 6 to the maxillary left quadrant. 7 to the mandibular left quadrant. 8 to the mandibular right quadrant. Regarding tooth numbers within these quadrants, the number 1 denotes the central incisor. 2 is for the lateral incisor. 3 identifies the canine. 4 refers to the first premolar in permanent dentition and the first molar in deciduous dentition. 5 stands for the second premolar in permanent dentition and the second molar in deciduous dentition. In permanent dentition exclusively, 6 is the first molar, 7 is the second molar, and 8 is the third molar known as wisdom tooth. Tooth identification in dental anatomy is methodically organized using the World Dental Federation numbering system, which is precise and globally recognized. This system employs a two-digit number for each tooth facilitating clear communication among dental professionals. The mouth is divided into four quadrants by the World Dental Federation numbering system, indicated by the first digit in the tooth's identification number. For permanent dentition, these quadrants are numbered from 1 to 4. 
Quadrant 1 refers to the maxillary right, quadrant 2 to the maxillary left, quadrant 3 to the mandibular left, and quadrant 4 to the mandibular right. Each quadrant in an adult contains eight teeth, which are sequentially numbered from the midline, starting with the central incisor, toward the back, culminating with the third molar, also known as the wisdom tooth. This results in tooth numbers ranging from 11 to 18 for quadrant 1, 21 to 28 for quadrant 2, 31 to 38 for quadrant 3, and 41 to 48 for quadrant 4. For deciduous or baby teeth, the World Dental Federation numbering system modifies the first digit to denote quadrants 5 through 8. Quadrant 5 represents the maxillary right and quadrant 6 the maxillary left in the upper jaw. Quadrant 7 corresponds to the mandibular left and quadrant 8 to the mandibular right in the lower jaw. The teeth within these quadrants are numbered from 51 to 55, 61 to 65, 71 to 75, and 81 to 85, reflecting the fewer number of teeth in the deciduous dentition. The surfaces of a tooth are intricately designed to serve a variety of functions, from aesthetics to the mechanical breakdown of food. Each surface is classified based on its position and role, facial surface, this outward-facing surface is visible when one smiles. It is divided into, the labial surface, typically found on the front, or anterior teeth, this surface faces the lips and is often the most visible during social interactions. The buccal surface, located on the side, or posterior teeth, this area faces the inner cheek. Lingual surface, oriented towards the tongue, this surface is present in all teeth and interacts directly with ingested food. Mesial surface, pointing towards the dental arch's midline, the mesial surface is crucial in dental health as it is a common site for plaque accumulation, which can lead to cavities if not cleaned properly. Distal surface, located opposite the mesial surface, it faces away from the midline. This rear side of the tooth is also prone to plaque accumulation and tartar buildup. Proximal surface, encompassing both the mesial and distal surfaces, the proximal surface is adjacent to neighboring teeth within the same arch. This area is especially important to clean during flossing, as food particles and plaque are frequently trapped here. Incisal edge, found on incisors and canines, this sharp edge is utilized for biting and cutting food and the occlusal surface, characterized by its rough, irregular texture, this surface on premolars and molars is designed for grinding and masticating food. Each tooth's external structure is uniquely designed for durability and function, maintaining an asymmetrical shape that corresponds to its counterpart in the opposite dental arch. We will explore the three main external parts that compose a tooth, the crown of the tooth, is coated with enamel, the hardest substance in the human body. Visible above the gum line, its glossy, white exterior serves not only for aesthetic purposes but also plays a crucial role in cutting, grinding, and crushing food. The enamel provides resilience, protecting the tooth's inner layers from decay and the wear and tear of daily use. The neck of the tooth, also known as the cemento enamel junction, is the area where the enamel-coated crown meets the cementum-covered root. This junction is a vital landmark during dental procedures and is pivotal for maintaining oral health. It is often a vulnerable spot for plaque accumulation and the onset of periodontal disease, necessitating meticulous care to preserve the tooth's longevity. The root, encased in cementum, a specialized calcified substance, secures the tooth within the jawbone. The portion below the gum line, known as the clinical root, is hidden from view, embedded within the alveolus. The root houses the tooth's nerve and blood supply within the root canal, extending from the pulp chamber to the root's apex. The interaction of these parts enables teeth to withstand the significant forces involved in biting and chewing. They are buttressed by the surrounding periodontal structures, such as the gums and bone, which provide additional support and stability. The structure of a tooth is composed of several layers, each with its own unique function and characteristics. The enamel acts as a formidable shield for the tooth's crown. As the body's hardest and most mineralized tissue, it's designed to withstand the forces of chewing and protect against the onslaught of bacteria. Despite its strength, enamel is translucent, allowing the color of the underlying dentin to shine through, which contributes to the overall color of the tooth. Lying just beneath the enamel and making up the majority of the tooth structure is the dentin. This mineralized connective tissue, while not as hard as enamel, surpasses bone in hardness. Dentin's yellowish hue is what primarily determines a tooth's color. It is characterized by a lack of blood vessels, hence described as avascular. 
the dentin contains a network of microscopic channels known as dentinal tubules. These tubules extend from the interior of the tooth, where the dental pulp resides, to the exterior beneath the enamel. Within these tubules are the extensions of odontoblasts, the cells responsible for dentin formation. When enamel is damaged or worn away, these tubules can transmit signals to the nerve inside the tooth, leading to sensitivity or pain. The interaction between enamel and dentin is crucial for the tooth's ability to function properly. The enamel provides the first line of defense against external damage, while the dentin supports the enamel and absorbs the pressure exerted during biting and chewing. In addition to enamel and dentin, the tooth also includes cementum, a specialized, mineralized connective tissue that covers the root. Its avascular nature means it lacks blood vessels. While similar in density to bone, cementum is significantly softer than the enamel that covers the crown of the tooth. Its primary function is to anchor the tooth securely within the alveolar bone of the jaw, a process facilitated by the attachment of periodontal ligaments connecting the cementum to the jawbone. This connection is essential for withstanding the forces of chewing and biting. At the core of the tooth lies the pulp, a soft, living tissue rich in nerves, blood vessels, and lymphatics. This vital part of the tooth is responsible for its nourishment, sensory response, and continuous growth and repair. The pulp plays a crucial role in maintaining the tooth's health by providing essential nutrients and oxygen while also removing waste products. The pulp is divided into two main regions. Coronal pulp, located within the crown, the coronal pulp is the larger section of the pulp cavity. This chamber houses the majority of the pulp's nerves and blood vessels and is responsible for the vital functions of the tooth, such as nutrient supply and sensory perception. And the radicular pulp or pulp canal, extending from the coronal pulp, the radicular pulp travels down through the roots of the tooth within narrow pathways known as root canals. These canals end at the apical foramen, small openings at the tips of the roots, allowing the passage of nerves and blood vessels into and out of the tooth, thus connecting it to the body's circulatory system. Now, we'll turn our attention to the periodontium, the foundational structure supporting the teeth. It comprises a specialized set of tissues that surround and support the teeth, anchoring them within the jaw bones. This support is achieved through a type of fibrous joint known as dentoalveolar syndesmosis, commonly referred to as gomphosis. The periodontium consists of four main components, firstly, the alveolar bone, a part of the jawbone, encases and supports the roots of the teeth. It contains the tooth sockets, known as dental alveoli, in which the roots of the teeth are embedded. This bone features an inner cancellous, spongy, structure, surrounded by a dense layer of cortical bone. Notably, the alveolar bone is dynamic and undergoes continuous remodeling in response to the forces exerted by tooth movement. Additionally, cementum plays a crucial role in attaching the tooth to the alveolar bone. This attachment is mediated by the periodontal ligament, which is vital for the stability and support of the tooth within the jaw. The periodontal ligament is a crucial element of the periodontium, functioning as a soft connective tissue that envelops the tooth root. Composed of collagen fiber bundles, it establishes an essential link between the cementum of the teeth, the gingivae, and the alveolar bone. Rich in nerves and blood vessels, the ligament plays a diverse and vital role in dental health. The functions of the periodontal ligament include, supportive function, it anchors the teeth firmly within the jawbone, maintaining their proper position and alignment. Hydraulic shock absorber, the ligament acts as a cushion, mitigating stress and forces exerted during biting and chewing, thereby protecting the tooth and the jawbone from excessive pressure. Sensory function, containing sensory nerve fibers, the ligament provides crucial feedback on pressure and pain, which is important for regulating bite force. Nutritive function, blood vessels within the ligament facilitate the transport of essential nutrients to the surrounding tissues, supporting their health and function. Homeostatic and remodeling function, the ligament participates in the dynamic process of bone remodeling, adapting to changes in tooth position and bite forces. An eruptive function, it assists in the eruption of teeth, guiding their movement to the appropriate position within the oral cavity. The gingiva, a key element of the periodontium and commonly known as the gums, is a type of soft epithelial tissue essential for oral health. It serves to protect the teeth and secure them in their positions within the jaw. Enveloping the necks and roots of the teeth, the gingiva also extends over the alveolar part of the jawbones. 
The gingiva is composed of various parts, each with its specific function, attach gingiva. This segment is firmly bound to the underlying alveolar bone and tooth cementum, providing stability and protection for the teeth and jawbone. Free marginal gingiva, positioned at the edge of the gums, it forms a collar-like structure around the teeth and creates the gingival sulcus, a small space where the gum meets the tooth. And gingival papilla, or interdental gingiva, this section of the gingiva fills the gaps between adjacent teeth. It plays a pivotal role in preventing food particles and bacteria from getting lodged between the teeth, thereby protecting against periodontal disease. The vascular system of the teeth is crucial for dental health, with the primary blood supply orchestrated by the maxillary artery, a significant branch of the external carotid artery. The arteries involved in this process are the posterior superior alveolar artery and the anterior superior alveolar artery, these arteries play a key role in supplying blood to the maxillary arch, which includes the upper teeth. And the inferior alveolar artery, this artery is responsible for the vascular supply to the mandibular arch, encompassing the lower teeth. Dental branches from these primary arteries enter the tooth roots through a small opening called the apical foramen. Once inside, they terminate in the dental pulp, the innermost part of the tooth containing nerves and blood vessels. Within the pulp, these arteries branch further, forming an extensive vascular network. This network is not merely a conduit for blood flow, it serves as a vital lifeline, delivering essential nutrients to the tooth and facilitating the removal of waste products. The venous drainage system of the teeth closely mirrors their arterial supply. The veins responsible for draining blood from the teeth follow paths similar to those of the arteries that supply them. Key veins in this process correspond to the posterior superior alveolar artery, the anterior superior alveolar artery, and the inferior alveolar artery. These veins collect venous blood and primarily drain into the pterygoid venous plexus. Additionally, some of the venous blood from the teeth drains into the facial vein. The lymphatic drainage pattern of the teeth varies depending on whether they are situated in the maxillary or mandibular arch. The lymph vessels from the maxillary teeth typically drain into the submandibular lymph nodes. These nodes are located beneath the jaw and are responsible for filtering lymphatic fluid from the upper teeth and surrounding areas. In some cases, the lymph from these teeth may bypass the submandibular nodes and drain directly into the deep cervical lymph nodes, which are situated deeper in the neck along the length of the internal jugular vein. The lymphatic drainage from the mandibular teeth primarily leads to the submental and submandibular lymph nodes. The submental nodes, located just under the chin, receive lymph from the lower incisor teeth, while the submandibular nodes filter lymph from the rest of the mandibular teeth. Regarding the nerve supply, the trigeminal nerve, also known as the fifth cranial nerve, is primarily responsible for the sensory innervation of the teeth. This innervation is achieved through two of its branches, the maxillary nerve and the mandibular nerve. The branches of the maxillary nerve, particularly the superior alveolar nerves, innervate the maxillary teeth. These nerves, branching off from the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, extend to the upper teeth and are responsible for conveying sensory information, including pain, pressure, and temperature sensations. The mandibular teeth receive their nerve supply from the mandibular nerve, specifically through the inferior alveolar nerve. Originating from the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve, it provides similar sensory feedback to the lower teeth. Inside the dental pulp, the terminal branches of these nerves form a complex network known as the dental plexus. This plexus includes sensory fibers that transmit signals related to various sensations, such as pain, pressure, and temperature changes. This sensory input is crucial for protective reflexes, like the reflexive bite release that occurs when biting down on something hard or painful. Additionally, the teeth receive autonomic sympathetic innervation from the cervical sympathetic plexus. These sympathetic fibers significantly contribute to regulating blood flow within the pulp tissue. In the context of dental anatomy's clinical correlations, we will concentrate on tooth fractures. These fractures can occur at various levels within the tooth structure, each presenting unique challenges and necessitating specific treatment considerations. Crown fractures, these involve the visible portion of the tooth above the gum line and are often more noticeable due to their location. The severity of such fractures can range from minor chips to extensive damage affecting a large portion of the crown, significantly impacting the patient's appearance and chewing ability. 
root fractures, these occur below the gum line and affect the root of the tooth, presenting greater challenges in diagnosis and treatment. Often not visible in a standard oral examination, root fractures may require detailed imaging for identification. A primary indicator of a tooth fracture is the degree of mobility. This is especially crucial in cases of subluxation, where the tooth is displaced but not completely detached from its socket. In alveolar fractures, which extend to the bone, significant tooth mobility or displacement is a key diagnostic sign. Diagnostic procedures typically involve periapical x-rays, essential for assessing the extent of the fracture and developing an appropriate treatment plan. The potential consequences of tooth fractures, such as pulp necrosis, infection, or loss of tooth vitality, highlight the need for extended monitoring and follow-up care. Early and appropriate intervention is vital not only to address immediate symptoms and cosmetic concerns but also to prevent long-term complications. Preserving the tooth's functionality and preventing issues such as misalignment of adjacent teeth, bite problems, and further oral health deterioration are critical considerations in the treatment plan. In conclusion, dental anatomy is a fundamental aspect of oral health, encompassing the study of the structure and function of teeth. The permanent dentition consists of 32 teeth, while the deciduous dentition, often referred to as baby or milk teeth, comprises 20 teeth. Each tooth is structurally divided into two main parts, the crown and the root, with the neck of the tooth, also known as the cemento-enamel junction, marking the transition between these two areas. Internally, each tooth features a pulp cavity that houses the dental pulp. The structural integrity of a tooth is provided by three mineralized tissues, enamel, cementum, and dentin. In each half arch of the adult dentition, the typical arrangement includes two incisors, which are the frontmost teeth used for cutting food. One canine, a pointed tooth used for tearing food. Two premolars, which are transitional teeth between the canines and molars, used for grinding. And three molars, including the wisdom teeth, which are the rearmost teeth used primarily for grinding food.